Patrick Corbin should not be a major league pitcher. I'm just going to come out and say it. But I'm not saying that in the way that an angry 13-year-old on Twitter would. I promise you that when I say that, it has nothing to do with his struggles on the mound that have now lasted for about three seasons. For a guy currently rocking a 4-16 and 16 record, that's nowhere near the first thing you should think about. I meant that opening statement as an absolute compliment. The origin story of Patrick Corbin is what really cements the point of why we're all here right now. And you're going to hear all about it, right after a quick word from Jesse Winker's new favorite company. This video is brought to you by Manscaped, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. Manscaped offers the best products for the big three odor zones of your body, specifically your private ones. Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of stuff from their all-in-one Perfect Package 4.0. First thing to highlight in this kit is the new Lawn Mower 4.0, which is Manscaped's fourth generation electric waterproof trimmer. Gotta say, I used it. Pretty much no discomfort, which for grooming down there is a really good thing to say. It's cordless and waterproof, so you can trim in the shower. Super convenient and makes for easier cleanup too. The Lawn Mower 4.0 trimmer has a super smart charging system with a wireless charging dock and these little LED lights on the front to show you how much juice you have. You get up to 90 minutes of use for one full charge. Also, cool little feature, if you tap the button on the front three times, it has a travel lock, which is great for if you're taking it on the go. Also included in the Perfect Package 4.0 kit are two things I never really knew I needed the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Simply apply the Crop Preserver after your shower for an all-day body odor protection. The Crop Reviver has cooling aloe vera in it to quickly refresh the area whenever you need it. Gotta give Manscaped some points too for this little shaving mat that comes with the package. Pretty clever and unique mat that they give you to shave on. You know, for when you're feeling... ballsy. For a limited time, you get all this plus two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts when you use the promo code SRS at checkout. Manscaped, the perfect tools for your family jewels. Patrick Corbin once had so little hardcore baseball experience that he showed up to his first high school tryout in jeans. As a junior in high school, he was going to throw baseballs competitively wearing jeans. And full disclosure, we're not dropping that point for the whole time we're here together. It's amazing and such a lovable detail. Then, Corbin did throw a baseball. One throw later, the coaches thought he would be their first professional ball player. One throw. The whole thing has kind of become an urban legend as time moves on. The story has some mythical qualities to it anyway. Some claim shorts was what our big boy Pat was wearing that day. Some say he was dripped out in sweatpants. There's some conflicting reports about how hard he was able to throw in that pitching tryout. However, Pat has confirmed the jeans thing himself in a Draw My Life video. Remember those? Just sat in the back, had jeans on, don't even know if I had the right equipment. One thing everyone can agree on was right before Pat pulled up to tryouts that day, he was decidedly not a baseball player. At least not anymore. Despite some little league and middle school experience, he had given the game up by the time his freshman year of high school started. Corbin was a basketball and football player throughout much of high school, but he first even considered trying out for baseball as a junior. He just kind of preferred to mess around with his friends with baseball, not actually play competitively. His dad urged him to try out earlier in high school. He was just like, Hey, guess what? What? Shut up. But he was convinced to try out as a junior. And with basically zero training and formal baseball experience, to say he secretly had a rocket for an arm is an understatement. By high school lefty standards, he had the scavenger from Call of the Dead for an arm. In jeans, with no experience, Corbin was chucking in the high 80s on his fastball. These kinds of players don't just stumble into their high school team's laps. Corbin did. He basically from day one led his high school team to being the best in New York. This while also still being one of the best basketball players in the area. And that on its own is still unbelievable. In his two years as a high school pitcher, 
He didn't take the loss in a single game. Not one. The kid everyone else at tryouts probably at least laughed a little bit under their breath at was now one of the best high school arms in New York, and clearly the best player on his team. But even for a hard-throwing, dominant high school lefty, he had two major strikes against him going into college. One was his grades. They weren't quite good enough for a major four-year university. The second was that, relatively speaking, he was still kind of an unknown, even after all that. You know what's a cool thing to do as a big baseball dork? Go to future MLB players' perfect game profiles. Perfect Game is, by many accounts, the king of amateur baseball scouting and talent evaluation. Their showcases and events dominate youth baseball. Bryce Harper, Justin Upton, and Aaron Hicks have the most positive reports on their pages I've seen so far. By high school, most future big leaguers have some idea they're going to be a big leaguer, or at least could be. This stage of their career is a good measuring stick for their ceiling in baseball. Corbin's Perfect Game profile is basically blank. It's got a velo estimation, which we knew already, but nothing else. Which is very odd for a guy as good as he was then, and as good as he'd wind up becoming in Major League Baseball. Still, goes to show just how unlikely the fact that he would become a very wealthy man as a result of Major League Baseball pitching prowess was. Corbin still played basketball in JUCO too, along with baseball, before eventually making the move to play year-round in Florida. Because, I don't know if you knew this, New York can get kind of cold. There's this thing called snow they have up there that Florida doesn't really know about. You know, the Yankees actually had opening day snowed out one time. Then, he gave up basketball, trained solely in baseball, and the very next year was drafted in the second round, 80th overall by the Angels. The top junior college player taken in the whole draft. Three years after trying out in jeans, Corbin was one of the top drafted players in baseball. Three years and change after trying out in jeans, he was rated to be in the upper echelon of players in an MLB team's minor league system. This phrase is very telling. We'll need development time. That's because if you really break this whole situation down, he was still kind of learning how pitching works while being one of a team's top pitching prospects. You want to know something? In the grand scheme of things, he really didn't need much time. April 30th, 2012, less than three years after he was drafted, Patrick Corbin was the starting pitcher for the Arizona Diamondbacks in a Major League Baseball game. Oh yeah, the Angels traded him for a funny guy who pledged to donate his UCL to science. Now who saw this one coming? Okay, I'll do you one better in the who saw this one coming game. The very next year, as a 23-year-old, Here's Patrick Corbin as a National League All-Star. And he got Big Poppy to hit into a double play. The real one, not the fake one from American Dad. This was a man who was essentially a full-time basketball player, like, not that long ago. These kinds of things don't happen. What does happen, and should derail a miracle train like this, is an injury. That's very common, and Corbin would tear his UCL in spring training the next year. Hey, I know a guy who could help there. Injuries like this can completely devour a guy's career. A ton of players get hurt and are just never the same. And for what looked to be the long haul, that seemed to be the case with Corbin. His first two full seasons back weren't anything amazing. The first was so far below league average that it even included a demotion to the bullpen. The once 23-year-old All-Star looked like his best days were going to be well behind him by age 27. And then 2018 happened. Fifth in NL Cy Young voting, a trip back to the All-Star game, and the ace of a winning baseball team. Patrick Corbin was the best he'd ever been. He was so good that he was able to succeed by throwing the lowest percentage of pitches in the strike zone out of anyone in baseball, and it worked. Top 10% in strikeout rate, top 6% in whiff rate, top 3% in chase rate. Gene's kid was disgusting now, and was about to sign a contract for $140 million to be a professional baseball pitcher. Oh my goodness! Six years, 140. Yeah. 
The Washington Nationals brought Corbin on board before 2019 to bolster their rotation. They thought he was going to be a missing piece for a championship push. And he basically was. Outside of this one annoying pest named J.D. Davis, Corbin was still carving hitters up. Before long, he was on the mound for the home team in the World Series. He took a loss that night, but not four days later. On October 30th, 2019, Patrick Corbin was the winning pitcher in Game 7 of the World Series. He pitched the Nationals to a World Series title. Gene's kid. The performance he turned in out of the bullpen in Game 7 single-handedly boosted the Nats' chance of winning it all that night by over 26%. And here he is, holding up a World Series trophy. A lefty from New York who went on to win in Washington, D.C. He's just like Martin Van Buren. I had to look up where every single U.S. president was from to come up with a joke like that. So if you ever say that Patrick Corbin shouldn't be in the big leagues, you're right. And that's a testament to how impressive his career is. He's one of the most accomplished pitchers in the game today, even after coming into the game late, in terribly bad baseball drip, dealing with injuries that can change the course of your life, not just your career, and still turned in a fantastic career. When you think of Patrick Corbin, don't think of what came after that championship winning night. That's only temporary. Think of everything that came before, because that'll last forever.